David Gutierrez is an active duty naval officer that has been serving the country for more than 18 years. He's the co-founder of Storehouse 310 Ventures LLC, which is a real estate investment company that invests in cash flow rental properties. He is passionate about helping other active duty service people develop a transition plan through real estate investing. Welcome back to another episode. I am honored to have David Gutierrez on the show. David, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you very much, Dion. I really appreciate it. A uh, couple things. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you for the show, the value you add. Uh, and, and I truly believe these types of things change lives. I think the education and the knowledge piece is, is huge and it, and it can really uh, set people on a different course. And so thank you for having me. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, we were just talking before we hit uh, the record button, and I'm very excited to to share, you know, your story, your background, and also this, I think it's a very powerful message that you have to share with our listeners out there. So let's go ahead and tell our listeners a little bit about your background and how you got started in real estate. Yeah, sure. So I am a uh, 18 year, uh, Navy vet. I'm currently stationed in Maryland and, uh, you know, been, been stationed all over the world, had a, had an amazing adventure. Uh, the commercial didn't lie, you know, you join the Navy, see the world and it's been a constant adventure. So it's, it's been great. Um, but you know, as, as we were uh, going to different duty stations, we took advantage of the VA loan and got into real estate, really, really passionate about real estate. I happen to marry a woman that uh, is not afraid to take on rehabs, which is, uh, I recommend that to anybody uh, because it, it, it really enabled us to get into some properties, add some significant value and uh, just, you know, really uh, just took our, our real estate adventure and, and, and just made it grow. So it was awesome. But the, the plan at the time, I hadn't really thought too deeply was to just acquire some properties, potentially rent them out. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure how much you know about the Navy, but uh, we typically are stationed in very expensive parts of the country or overseas. So whether it's California, you know, West Coast or along the East Coast, uh, real estate is not a very easy game to get into as far as cash flow and, and single family homes and that type of thing. Um, and a lot of times you just don't make money. So as I uh, continue to refine my portfolio, uh, my roommate from the Naval Academy, Stuart Grazier, we decided to start a business where we were going to purchase uh, properties more in the middle of the country that, that uh, offered a, a additional cash flow. And just that education piece, right? Trying to understand what, what uh, cash flow meant, what assets are, uh, just educating ourselves on how to uh, establish a portfolio that, that would actually generate income. Because at the end of the day, uh, we needed something to transition into uh, after the military, the military comes to an end. It's a it's a young man and women's game. Uh, you know the the max you can serve is forty years, but that's very very unusual. Uh, it's it's unusual to get to this point, right? To be at about twenty years, I think it's one percent of people who join actually hit the twenty year mark. So having a transition plan was something that was really important to us. And, and as we refine that, helping other military members define their and refine their um, uh, their transition plan became of utmost important to us to be able to provide that service. So. That's kind of me in a in a nutshell, a military guy that's uh, doing doing real estate on the side, and and uh, it's been awesome. Tell us about your first deal. Uh, so my first deal, <laughs> funny enough, uh, was a great education. I consider it. Um, it was a very expensive education. Uh, I bought a condo. I paid four hundred dollars a square foot in Hawaii in two thousand six. Uh, pretty much right after I closed. Uh, I lost about two hundred dollars a square foot in value uh, at, at the time uh, because you know we're two thousand six going into the two thousand eight uh, recession. Uh, it was a uh, it was something I could manage because I was living there. I was stationed in Hawaii, so it was my primary residence. Used a uh, actually at the time I wasn't even educated enough to use a VA loan. Uh, I just didn't know the power uh, that, that we had with with the different types of loans, and and I just wasn't educated. It was the bottom line. Long story short, bought that condo. Uh, by the time I left Hawaii, because it's military, so you are going to leave those uh, amazing places at some point, I was losing about $1,000 a month when it was rented. Uh, so I ended up selling it. at I bought it for $400,000, sold it at $280,000. And uh, just it was a very, very expensive experience. But I'll tell you, I probably would not have um, gotten to where we are today if it was not for, for that learning experience. So I don't recommend it. I recommend you listen to, to shows like yours and learn from people like me. Don't make the same mistakes, but, uh, but, but it was a great experience. 
And speaking of that, uh, what do you think was like, what was the big takeaway from that deal? Yeah, I think the biggest takeaway was education. Uh, there, there are so many resources, whether you're listening to podcasts, you're reading books, um, you're talking to folks, you, you pick up the phone, you know, folks can give you a call, uh, it might be a little more challenging based on your time zone. Um, but and, and we put our number uh, out on our website. And it doesn't have to be you don't have to be buying a house from you know, store, storehouse 310 in order to have a conversation. We're we are happy to talk to folks. And a lot of my conversations with uh, potential clients are exactly that it's just educational conversations. So there are so many resources out there. Biggest takeaway is just educate yourself, do your due diligence. Like I said, I, I went into a deal as a, I was a young lieutenant at the time and uh, as a military guy, I did not use a VA loan. Like to me now to hear, to hear myself say that is crazy, right? You, you can get into a house with zero down, very low uh, interest rate and the, one of the best deals in real estate and I, I didn't even know about it. Yeah. So uh, what was your transition like into the multifamily space? Yeah, so it's um, so what we ended up doing, uh, Stuart and I, we uh, we recognized that buying houses and doing that kind of that you know buy a house in Hawaii and California, and he had a similar experience that uh, that I had. Uh, we realized that it just wasn't sustainable and it wasn't a great business model. So we ended up both uh, separately buying through turnkey providers. I was in Milwaukee, uh, he was down in Alabama, and we had a terrible experience, which which again is was amazing because it really forced us to to start our business. Uh, I didn't want anybody to go through what we went through. So, um, you know, as we refined what we wanted to do, uh, we focused more on the single family realm. And, and, you know, at this point it's grown to, you know, trying to get to the point where we're doing, you know, 10 houses a month. Um, right now we're at about four. So, you know, looking to scale that. And to, to your question, uh, I think there's just a refinement in strategy as you go forward. So a lot of folks will go from single family and get into different things just based on your network, education and exposure. And so now we're looking at uh, mobile home parks. Uh, we have one syndication that we uh, partnered with and, and we're looking to try and lock that down. The negotiations have been very interesting. Uh, the seller has not been uh, as cooperative as, you, as you'd like. But again, all these are learning experiences, right? Um, so that's really the route we're going as, as far as multifamily and getting into, into that realm. But i um, looking for really looking for opportunities to just refine our portfolios and offer our investors opportunities to diversify their portfolios. And that's really what drove us into, into multifamily. What's the, uh, the play for the multi or the mobile home park that you're looking at right now? It has an existing like uh, uh, mobile homes on it and you're going to kind of like renovate them or put new ones on it. Yeah. So the plan was, uh, initially the plan was to purchase. It does have uh, mobile homes on it. Currently, uh, we were, when we initially were doing our due diligence, we're looking at the potential to expand the number of mobile homes. As we really dug into it, uh, we realized that, uh, some of the numbers that we were being provided weren't, weren't necessarily the most accurate numbers. Uh, so, um, we're having to refine our plans and, and now we're looking to, cause at the end of the day, when you do real estate, uh, in, in our mind, you know, th this should be a, a venture that that's a win all around, right? You should, you should be able to invest in a place, get a good deal. Uh, the seller should be able to make some money. You know, you want them to make money. It's a, it's a win for them. We get a good deal. That's a win for us. And then the tenants, you, you should always consider the tenants as well and, and, and giving them a, a play, honor them by giving them a good place to live. Right. So the seller just didn't, that, that wasn't a focus for him. Uh, his budget for monthly, uh, maintenance is extremely low. There's 26 odd houses. And I think his budget was somewhere around $500. Like that, that just, right. That doesn't make sense. Um, Not at all. So all that being said, there's a lot of rehab that has to be done. So we just had to refine our numbers and, and we're looking at the potential play now is to uh, purchase it and maybe uh, owner finance, sell some of those, those units back to the tenants. Cause a lot of them have been there for a long time, even in the state that the mobile homes are. And, and, and then potentially just on the the the, um, the pads and, and rent those out. So we're we're looking at that. Uh, there's there's a lot of options, and you know one thing that you know as we talked about earlier that education piece. As you look at more different types of deals, you can then refine and have plan A, plan B, plan C, and, and that'll help you to land deals, analyze deals, and and potentially be able to um, you know shift on the go. Because as we say in the military, no no plan uh, survives first contact, right? Mm -hmm. So. So you always have to have those backup plans. 
Now you're moving around a lot. And I know you said that right now you're uh, in Maryland, but I think you're investing, you said in Wisconsin, right? So yes, how, how are you, how are you working that out? Cause uh, you're stationed in different locations, but you're essentially managing at a distance, right? We are. Yes. Um, and, and so it's, it's very unique for military folks again, to get into the real estate game where we're stationed can be very difficult, whether you're overseas or you're deploying a bunch or you're in these very expensive locations. So, uh, through just a series of events, Stuart and I, so Stuart's actually currently stationed in Colorado. So my business partner stationed in Colorado, uh, I am stationed in Maryland, and then we run our business out of Milwaukee, our, our Trinky companies in Milwaukee. Uh, the way that you do that, and it's something, I think it's a skill set that, uh, that uh, the military builds is, is um, establishing a team. And, and that's really the way we did it. So the first, before we ever did our first deal, we, we had a team in place and that took, that's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of vetting. You have to, I think really internally, you have to understand your why, why you're doing the business that you want to do, what your purpose is, and then you can build a culture and a team around what you want to do and then go from there. So that's really what we did. We set up a team, an awesome team in Milwaukee. And everything from uh, the acquisition to the rehab and the sale, you know, all the way to the lenders and the title company, we've got that all lined up for, for our clients to make it as easy as possible. It took a while to build that. So now it's just, you know, now it's a well of machine. So eventually, uh, essentially your boots on the ground is your own internal team, not an external partner, right? That's okay. right. Okay. That's right. Okay. So we have, uh, uh, the initial person that we brought on, we were just blessed to be able to find somebody that had the same heart, you know, heart of giving. It's a faith-based business. So we had, we met somebody that shared all those, um, you know, those, those morals and, and that foundation. And, and once we did that, it, it just, it made the rest of the negotiations and the process that much easier. So we try to get back as much as we can. Um, but since COVID kicked off, you know, for any of our military listeners out there, uh, we have been, significantly restricted to not travel, which makes sense. Um, you know, readiness is a top concern. And, and if we're out at the beaches and getting sick and then passing that to the, to the ship, um, you know, that, that's an issue. So uh, we have not been able to get out there for a while, but again, that implicit trust and, and using technology, FaceTime and, and uh, you know, all those, all the tools that are at our disposal, we've been able to maintain that team and, and keep, keep deals going. Now, there was a really important message that, um, you know, you wanted to kind of put out there for our listeners. And we were talking about it before we hit the record button. So, you know, let's go ahead and tell our listeners about that and kind of give them a little bit of background understanding about, you know, the message. And then we'll explain it to them a little bit more in detail. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, when I think it's a it's time well spent when you sit down and you really think through your why. You think about what you want your future to look like. You think about what's most important. You put that down on paper and, and it's not just goals. It's not goal setting for the year. You know, I want to lose weight and, and get big muscles or whatever your goals may be. Um, it's really sitting down and refining. What do I want? What drives me? What's important to me? And then you ask why over and over again to really refine why it is that you, that you, your purpose essentially. And so when Stuart and I did that, uh, we realized that the things that are our priority are our are, are God, family, uh, our customers, our team, and then, and then ourselves, right? And as you go through that list, you very quickly realize that, that if you don't have a job and you're not potentially making money, it's hard to honor that entire chain because um, money is just a tool, right? So for us, we recognized, hey, we love this real estate game. We're entrepreneurial minded. We want to do this thing. We love the partnership between he and I. He's my, you know, he's, he's my brother. Um, and, and so for us, we decided, hey, we've got about four years left before being eligible for retirement. We need to come up with a transition plan. And we want to, we've given our life to the Navy. Uh, a lot of time has been spent there. So how can we best set ourselves up to buy our time back to give that to our family, uh, to our church, to whatever it is we want to do? And I think the message there is a lot of folks when they transition out of the military, they do what they have to do. They don't necessarily have options because they didn't uh, potentially prepare or think about what they wanted to do as they transition out of the military. So then they got to get a contracting job or they have to work for the government. They have to do these things. And that's their language. I have to go do this. Uh, Stu and I never wanted to have to do anything. 
we wanted to do what we wanted to do. And, and because we love real estate, we saw it as a, as a very good path to establishing those, those extra lines of income and so that we have options. And now we want to provide opportunities for others to have those options. Now with this, uh, this idea you're, of having a transition plan, especially for people that are in similar situations to you, maybe they are not necessarily as proactive as you guys are. Um, you know, what would you say to them? You know, I, I would say, and that's a, that's a great point and, uh, take advantage of people like Stu and I, right. Give us a call and, and let us talk to you, educate you, introduce you to our network. And, and what I would, what I would offer is that you take action. You don't have to start a turnkey business in order to benefit from passive income. You can buy properties from a turnkey business or you can join a syndication or you can put your money somewhere that's working for you. But what I've found is that unfortunately, a lot of folks, um, when it comes to investing, you know, a lot of people, it's not unusual. People just write checks to a uh, money manager and, and that money manager then takes that money and does what they do with it. And, and you're just kind of at the mercy of, of what happens. You can be very proactive in this approach and you can go out and you can buy houses, you can generate your own lines of income. And, and that's, I think that's the focus, right? You don't have to start a business to do that. Just take advantage of those that do. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't even necessarily have to be, you know, like massive deals, right? You know, it could be something smaller. Yeah, hundred percent. Like most of our uh, properties, you know, you're getting into these, these houses that are around a hundred thousand dollars is our typical deal. And they're generating, you know, anywhere from two to three hundred dollars of cash flow. Uh, you're in it total for about, you know, twenty twenty five thousand dollars, which, um, you know, for a lot of folks, I mean, it's, that's not that's not change. But when you're talking about investment, and you're investing in your future and generating income. Uh, if you have that money, you're going to put it in the market. You're going to put it somewhere, right? So if you put it in in real estate, just the tax benefits and and the constant uh, continuous cash flow, you're getting better percentages on that down payment. So yeah, these aren't huge investments, but and you're also controlling a hundred thousand dollar asset with potentially twenty five thousand dollars. You can't do that in the market, right? If you mm -hmm. if you want to control a hundred thousand dollars in the market, you better bring a hundred thousand dollars. So yeah, it's just that education piece and taking action. Mm -hmm. And this is and this is not just limited to you know service people. This definitely applies pretty much to everyone. Um, and I think what you're saying too, that kind of hit me a few years ago because like we were, like we were just talking, uh, you know, I've spent 11 years of my life living abroad in another country, you know, outside of my home, the USA. Um, and we, in, in, in throughout this experience, you know, I realized, I think it was maybe like two or three years ago that, Hey, there aren't any retirement plans out here, you know, <laughs> it's no retirement plans out here. And, um, you know, as far as being a foreigner in another country, my options are somewhat limited inside of this space, you know, out here. And one of the things I realized, um, I think it was two years ago, I said, you know what, I really need to make sure I have, like you said, a transition plan, you know, for when I return home, you know, what am I going to do? And I realized one thing. I had gotten so comfortable just living off of the income that I was producing. And I'm just like, oh, wow, you know, income's great, this, this, and that. But then I said, wait a minute, but what about your wealth? And that's, and then I started thinking back to The Rich Dad, Poor Dad, that book. Oh, not The, uh, the Cash Flow Quadrant, that one. You know, the E, the B, the S, and the I. And I said, you know what? I need to make a change because just having high income isn't going to cut it, you know, for the long run. So even though, um, you know, I, I totally agree with what you're saying, you know, I think like even ev everyone needs to start thinking about that, you know, W2 workers, even people that own their own business, you know, you should be thinking along these lines of like asset accumulation so you can produce that cash flow later on. Yeah, no, that's huge. And, and again, as you hit on a, a, a ton of awesome points there, one being that education piece, right? It, it comes down to, and you mentioned Rich Ed, Poor Dad and reading, you know, the cash, cash flow quadrant. Those books changed my life. It opened my mind to things I'd never considered before. And, and one thing that's really interesting, the military has been, um, and government jobs in general have been 
known for years to have these great pensions and, and even those are going away, right? So pensions are kind of a thing of the past and there's, um, you know, people coming in today, there's goodness to it in that uh, it used to be that if you didn't do 20 years, you got nothing outside of what you invested. Uh, but so now there's different plans to, you know, basically 401k type things for, for new folks coming in, but there is no, you know, the, 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 the 20 year get paid for the rest of your life type deal that's going away. So you have to really think through, okay, how am I going to generate, how am I going to replace this income? One, like you said, and, and two, how do I generate, and people have to change their mindset of wealth. You know, you, you don't have to have a million dollars and be this highly paid individual. You just have to cover your bills and you're financially free. You're financially independent. So when you, when you break it up into chunks like that, you realize, Hey, I can maybe make whatever five, $10,000 uh, a month. And I'm actually good. I'm completely free. can make whatever decisions I want. Everything else on top of that is, is, is just a cherry on top. You know, you just start, it just starts changing your mindset and really sets you in a place to, to make the decisions like you said, you know, but I think you probably spent some time sitting down thinking about your why, where you wanted to be, um, you know, evident through your podcast and the people that you have on. Uh, I think that that's, that's an important first step too. And you brought up another good point too. You said maybe, your essentially your freedom number might be like five or ten thousand dollars a month or something and all all people just have to do is just get in that mindset first it's like you get that well you said you find your why right and then you come up with your freedom number essentially maybe that is like five thousand a month maybe it's only you know three thousand a month is all you really need well i mean that's actually not that difficult to achieve when you think about it you know, that's maybe yeah. what, like a couple multifamily, like small multi, like duplexes, quiet, you know, quads or something like that. Yep. And you can achieve that. No, it's true. And, and if you, and once you achieve that, if you achieve it through real estate and say you've got that while you're leveraging those properties and you have, you know, a potential 30 year note or whatever it is that you have on that and, and you just are diligent. And then as you acquire more and you take some of that money off the top and start paying them off that, you know, that's a hockey stick trajectory of, of your income, right? People just don't necessarily think of it like that. So you can make a one-time investment into a house. Um, and initially it might be a little painful putting that $25,000 down. But as you think forward and you buy more houses and you have additional uh, income, if you choose to start paying those off, right? Everybody's got different strategies. everybody got different ideas on how to leverage and, and what to do. But potentially if you started paying those off and you had 10 properties that were cash flowing, you know, $200 a month, and you have $2,000 a month. That's pretty good. Well, as you start paying those off, that $2,000 can very, very quickly now jump to $10,000 a month. And, and that's just, and someone else is paying that for you, right? So again, it, it, you, know, you sit down, you think through that, and, and that number just is so flexible and it's so powerful, but you got to get in that mindset. And, and when you get in that mindset, the next most important thing is action. You take action. Um, so I will never say sorry, uh, or lament the, uh, my deal in Hawaii, uh, because it was a huge experience, a learning experience for me. And, and, and I would not have started the, the path that I am now, uh, if it wasn't for that, if that, for that condo. Um, and now it's super important to me to try and get in front of folks here in Maryland is the Naval Academy. I wish somebody like me, some old guy would have come and talked to me as a young midshipman and said, Hey, just check this out. Here's a VA loan. Go do this. If I would have bought, started buying houses at my first duty station, I mean, I, I don't know where I'd be right now, but it'd be a, a vastly different place than I am. And one thought that came to mind, uh, you may or may not have mentioned this, but when you were originally looking at setting up your whole transition plan and everything, um, why real estate? Why not like stocks or maybe even, you know, setting up your own consulting company? Yeah. Um, you know, it's funny you say that because I, um, for, for me, it, I was passionate about real estate. I love real estate. I love, I love taking something ugly and, and, and turning it into something beautiful and giving someone someone a place to live that they can be proud of. Uh, we all love that, right? We all love bringing people to our house and it's nice and clean and we've done some improvements and well, I want other people to have that experience. Um, so I was just super excited super excited about real estate, but then it's also the analytical side. When you look at the numbers, I mean, I think, and I think it was Rich Dad Poor Dad in there, a, a line that, that really clicked for me. Um, he said, and if I'm misattributing it to him, you know, um, my, my apologies, but it was something along the lines of not, uh, not everybody who does real estate is rich, but 
all the rich do real estate. And, and there was something there that I, it just, it, it resonated. And as you look at the numbers and like I kind of alluded to in the stock market, uh, when you really run the numbers and so if you have a hundred thousand dollars invested, that's all your money. It's, you're not controlling an asset for, you know, a quarter of that, like you are in real estate. And, and also the losses are significant, right? So if you lose 50% in the market, you're down to $50,000. Well, the market doesn't have to go up by a hundred percent for you to be back where you are, right? It has to go up well over a hundred percent just to get you back to even. Whereas in real estate, you know, the market in Milwaukee could fall out tomorrow. People still have to have a place to live. And and my rent, what happened in the great recession, um, rent went up because people lost their houses. And so the supply for rental properties went down because people didn't, you know, unfortunately folks didn't have a house. And, and so rent actually went up. And so when you look at it from that perspective and cash flow and what goes in your pocket and how you assess assets, uh, it changes the game. So uh, for me, the stock market just couldn't offer the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you feel, um, you know, based off of your experience in the military, like what do you feel has been very helpful for you? Things that you've learned, lessons you've learned from the military that's helpful for you in your investing career? Yeah, I think uh, a lot of time, you know, the, the military is a, is a subset of, of society, right? So we have a lot of the same issues that you find in society. But what I will say is, is just the uniformity and, and the, the standards that we have and the way that we train. Uh, some people will argue that it stifles creativity, um, but I have found some of the most creative, well-written, uh, entrepreneurial folks, uh, that I've ever met have been in the military, have a military background. And I think what the military offers is an opportunity to um, refine those processes and potentially be more organized. You know, most people, if you, if you hire a military guy or gal, they're, they're most likely not going to show up work, uh, to, to work late, right? Like there's certain things that are ingrained. There's small little things and it can even go back to, you know, if you've read Atomic Habits, you know, those little tiny incremental changes that the military instills in most people uh, just drive to a product at the end that's um, it's just more refined when it comes to organization uh, and, and, and potentially the go-getter mentality because all these folks are special, right? They raise their hand to volunteer to serve their country. It, there's no draft. It's 100% volunteer force. Uh, you typically go in knowing that there could be a potential that you're risking your life for your country and, and for your shipmates or your, your, uh, your airmen, your soldiers, your Marines that are next to you. And so there's, there's just these different little qualities that you can't really put your finger on it and say, because these are all individuals too, right? Mm -hmm. uh, me and Stu are vastly different. You know, I'm very extroverted. He's more introverted. So for me, what my experiences are, have been different than his, but you kind of know what you're going to get, um, you know, as, as, a, as an individual uh, when, when folks go through the military. So uh, not a great answer, I know, because it's, it's so hard um, to, to quantify uh, and, and qualify all the military members uh, within a, a very general generalized statement. But um, I, I do think that those, those small habits that, and standards that, that you're held to do drive a different, definite change. Mm -hmm. And the habits, you know, they're developed through discipline, you know, I think is one of the biggest things. And for, for whatever reason, every time I think about servicemen, I always think of, you know, very highly disciplined individuals. And I had this conversation with another investor a while back and I, you know, we basically kind of concluded, we said, if there's any one thing that's going to determine whether or not somebody's successful at something, it's discipline. You know, you just have to like discipline yourself to do what needs to be done on a regular basis, you know, until right. you achieve it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, and I, and I also think action, right? I think the, the quality because I'm sure you've talked to a, a ton of folks who the the paralysis by analysis, right? And and you just, you know, will, I'm not suggesting that you just kind of go out and do something crazy. Like, I don't know, buy a house in Hawaii without using a VA loan if you're in the military. I'm not saying you should do that. But but I do think that you got to do something, right? And if, if you partner with, with um, folks that you trust, and, and that's what we encourage our clients that, you know, that they'll start asking questions. And, and a lot of our folks are military guys and gals anyway. So they're like, Hey, I'm deployed tomorrow. Send my paperwork. I'll be in Iraq and, and I'll, I'll somehow find a way to get it, sign it, get it back. We've closed deals all over the world with these folks, but, um, but ultimately it comes down to take that step. Right. And, and, and if it goes terribly wrong, uh, you learn something from it. 
it's an education. But most of the time, especially in like some of the properties that we're doing, these kind of starter properties, um, which you can build a great portfolio from, but there, there's there's low enough risk that the chances of it just going completely wrong and you losing everything, uh, they're pretty slim. So do you have any book recommendations for our listeners? Yeah, you know, I, uh, I, I try to use reading as a... Um, you know, part of my atomic habit. So every morning I get up, you know, I get for me personally, I get in the Bible um, with a group trying to get through the Bible in a year and, and it'll be the second time I've done it. And I'll tell you that the, the accountability of that group uh, took me years uh, and multiple starts and stops to ever get through it. But I got with a good group and actually got through the Bible in a year. So we're doing it for a second time. But for me, it's it, it really what it does for me. It puts me in the place that I need to be uh, every morning. That's how I start. It's a routine. Uh, and it gets me where I'm going. So, you know, I, the, the Bible, I think, is a, is a, is a great start. Um, I'm reading this book. It's from the Rich Dad Advisor series. It's uh, The Social Capitalist. And it really goes to my why. Josh and Lisa Lannon uh, started uh, Warrior's Heart, which uh, you know, is on my shirt. But uh, when Stu and I started our business, we wanted to give back. And we wanted to give back to veterans. And these folks, uh, they service uh, service members and first responders who are, I apologize for, I don't know if you can hear the kids upstairs. This is part of the, part of the working at home COVID. Um, but we, um, we really wanted to give back and, and they help service members and first responders with PTSD and substance abuse. That's their focus. They have a, an awesome business, but they built a business out of it as well. And that was really intriguing to Stuart and I. So the social capitalist, great book. Um, and they're great people. And then uh, another book I'm reading right now is called Killing Sacred Cows by Garrett B. Gunnerson. Awesome book. It's a mindset book, but it's also the sacred cows are the um, traditional thoughts on investing and where people tell you you should put your money. And he really challenges a lot of those paradigms, which is great. Uh, and if you have kids, uh, give them a heads up beforehand. My daughter is uh, very smart and she's like, daddy, why are you reading a book about killing cows? I'm like, no, nah, not, that's not what a sacred cow is. So, uh, but yeah, those are, those are all great books. So how could our listeners get in touch with you if they wanted to reach out? Yeah, for sure. So uh, storehouse310turnkey.com, that's our website. And at our website, you can see all the deals that we have. You can look at how we analyze them. All of our handles are on that, our, um, you know, our Instagram, our emails, our phone numbers, all that kind of stuff. Anything you'd need to get a hold of us is, is on that website. And, and that's probably the best place to go. All right. Well, thank you so much, David. It was a pleasure speaking with you. I'm so thankful for you, and I really appreciate you sharing your story. No, thank you very much for having me on. And, and again, just thank you for what you do. Thank you for this platform. Thank you for empowering others, and, and uh, keep it up. You're doing an awesome job. Thank you. appreciate it.